Hi, it's just a top well at Blue PK Computer Training, and in this video, we're going to look at array formulas. So let's get started. What we want to do here is work out the total. We've got quantity sold times unit price for each product. So we're going to do basic multiplication here. Quantity sold times unit price. And then I'll copy that down for the other products. And then I'll just add those up, and that will give me that total. Now, what the array formula do, will do is reduce the number of cells we have to use with formulas in to get to this result. In fact, we only need to use one cell with the formula in to get to this result. So let's see how that might work. So you think you might be able to just do this. So I'm going to sum this times this. And when I do that, I only get the first result. So the sum function isn't capable of showing all those multiple results and then adding them up. But if I select this here, I'm going to use a little F9 trick. So I'm pressing the F9 key on my keyboard. You can see actually that it has produced all those results, but it wasn't able to sum them up. So what we'll need to do, instead of just pressing Enter, uh, to confirm this formula, we'll have to use Control Shift Enter, and that essentially creates an array formula. So where the formula can normally only return one result, and you want it to sum up an array of results, for example, then an array formula is necessary. Now I'll do that again. So that was Control Shift Enter, and I'm going to look in the formula bar, and you'll see here that you've got these brace brackets around the formula. That's a good indication that you've got an array formula. Now, this calculation was done in Excel 2010. I'm actually going to move over to the most recent version of Excel because things are very different. If you've got Office 365, uh, you don't actually need to use Control Shift Enter anymore. So I'm going to ignore doing this helper column. I'm going to go straight over here. And I'm going to say sum this times this. Press enter, and you see it gives me the results straight away. So Microsoft have basically updated how array formula works in the new Excel. You don't need to use Control Shift Enter; it will automatically perform array calculations. Now there is another way of doing this, and I expect some of you know this that we didn't need to use an array formula at all. I just wanted to show you that as an example to get the concept of using array formulas. There is another function called sum product, and this deals with arrays really well. You can see the argument names are array one, array two. So what I can do essentially can say here, take this array, comma, and this array, and I'm not pressing control, just enter, I'm just pressing enter, and it will do the job as well. So there is, a dedicated function for this type of thing. But now Excel deals with arrays in different ways. We don't need to use some product in this scenario. So let's take another example. So I'm in the old version of Excel again, Excel 2010. What we've got here is sales 2015-2016. And what I've got to do is work out the percentage increase or decrease. So what I would do is I'd say, what's the difference between these two year sales? And then I'd divide it by the original, uh, the first year sales. And I would get the, I've got a 5% increase. So if I copy this down, I would get the increase or decrease for the other products. So I want to work out the largest percentage increase in sales. So if I was to use that helper column, I would say uh, max, Select those cells, and that would give me 7% largest decrease in sales. If I would use min, I'd get minus 10%. So what if I didn't have this helper column? So I'd use an array formula. So I could say uh, max. And what I would do is I'd say this year's sales minus... 2015 sales divided by 
the original, the first year sales. Two close brackets, no one close bracket at the end. And if I press enter, it doesn't give me an answer. But if I do control shift enter, it gives me the same result as when I use the helper column. I could do the same for the largest decrease in sales. So it would be uh, 2016 sales minus 2015 sales divided by 2015 sales. Here's the bracket and control shift enter would give me minus 10%. So min doesn't normally allow you to use these arrays within the formula, these ranges of cells to do calculations. So by using control shift enter, it converts it to an array formula and therefore it's allowed to, it can uh, produce a result for us, but so control shift enter. But let's go back to the new version of Excel and I'm going to go straight to doing an array formula. So I'm going to say uh, max here minus this. That needs to go in brackets. Order of precedence within calculations divided by that year. Now I'm not going to do control shift enter, I'm just going to press enter. It gives me the result. No need to use control shift enter in the new version of Excel. Same here, min. So I would say uh, this year minus this year divided by this year. Close the bracket. Just press again to no control shift enter. It gives me the result. Okay, next we're going to look at multi cell array formulas. You'll see what I mean. So what we want to do is write a formula once in the cell and it automatically to get copied down to the other cells using an array. So the trick to do here is to select all those cells. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to take all these cells and multiply it by the corresponding value in this column. Okay, and I'm going to do Control Shift Enter and you can see it copies the formula down to the other cells. Now, what's interesting about this, you can see it's an array formula because I've got the brace brackets. But if I try and delete one of these values here, it says you cannot change part of an array. Even if I try and delete the original, it won't do it. So it does prevent people from deleting your formulas unless they know they can select all of the formulas there and just press delete. So let's see what happens in a newer version of uh, Excel. So I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to mul say multiply that by this. And I'm not going to use control shift enter, I'm just going to press enter. And it does the same thing. Now what's interesting here is if I click on the original cell, you can see the formula's there. If I click on the next cell down, the formula's there but it's greyed out. So it's inheriting a formula from that first cell. It's kind of referring to it, but greyed out but it means it's not really in that cell. Now if I try and delete this, it doesn't allow me to do it. And what I'd have to do is go up to the first cell and delete it to delete the formulas in that column. So it's fairly similar. You can see how it's slightly different in the newer version of Excel. You don't need to use Control Shift Enter. Hi, right, let's look at another example. What we want to do is return the lowest budget uh, for sales department in the southeast area. Now I'm in uh, Excel 2010, which doesn't have MINIFS function within it. So I'm going to use an array formula to do this. So I'm going to say equals uh, min. And what I want to do is say if this column here, so control shift down arrow key, control backspace to go back to the formula, equals southeast comma. And then if, so if that's true, go to the next if and ask the question, uh, is the in the department column control backspace is that equal to sales if true we want to return the budget amounts okay so if I do control shift enter I get 2691 if you look here so if the sales 2691 
3001. Let's see if there's any others. Southeast sales, yep, yeah, 3128. So I could equally have used the max function to return the largest value. I need to use control shift enter and that will give me 3128. So you can see how that works. So over in the newer version of Excel, I can do the same thing here. I can say if this column here equals southeast and if this column just have done that was we need if there. So if this column here equals sales, then return the values in this column here. So don't need to use control shift enter because I'm in the new version of Excel and it gives me 2691. Now, probably what you would do in reality, I'm just showing you that to explain the concept is you'd use min ifs. So min range would be the budget that we want to find the minimum value in. The first criteria range would be area. And the criteria for that range would be this. And then the second criteria range would be the department. And the criteria for that would be that. And obviously I can just press enter because I'm using an inbuilt function there to return that result. So I'm back in Excel 2010 and I want to look at concept of arrays with lookup functions. So what I've got here is I want to look up Barry's maximum sales value. Now I'm actually going to use index for this. So the first argument is array, so that's all the possible results you want to return. Comma. Now I want to return this whole column of values and then find the maximum value within that. So if I put zero for my row number, that will force Excel to return the whole column. Now, how do I select the particular column I want to uh, find the maximum value in? Well, I can use match. I have to look up Barry within this row up here. And I'm doing an exact match. So that zero will allow us to return that whole column you can see I get value there because I'm in an old version of Excel. But if I wrap it in the max function, which can cope with that array of values it's returning, I get 4774. Now I'll just take the max out initially so you get a better understanding of what's going on here. So I get value there. But if I was to F9 this, you'll see that it's returning all those results in that column. It's just that this cell, because we're in an old version of Excel, can't cope with more than one value. So, but once I put it in an aggregating function like max, it will better cope with it, and I get the result 4774. So next lookup example, I want to find the stock level for this product now value I've got here is a combination of the line number and the product code. So I've got to somehow look that up across these two columns to return the correct stock. So we're going to use index for this. And the array is all the stock values. And then the row number, well, that'll be calculated using match. So I want to look up this value and somehow I've got to create that concatenation between line and product code. So what I would say is take these line numbers and concatenate using the ampersand symbol with a hyphen and then with the product code. And I'm doing an exact match. Okay, so if I press Control Shift Enter, it returns the correct result 689. 
Okay, so Control Shift Enter was needed there because I was doing that concatenation across multiple rows. Without Control Shift Enter, this gives me the value error. However, if I take that very same formula, then I copy it and go across to New Excel, just delete that, paste it in. Just press enter and it does the same thing. So I don't need control shift enter in the new version of Excel. So in the next example, we're going to do a lookup. So what I've got to find is the unit price within this master price list to complete my order. So if I did a V lookup, uh, I want to look up my product code here in this table array. I'm going to fix that returning values from the second column, performing an exact match. And if I copy that down, you'll see I get loads of errors. The errors are caused by the spaces. Now what I can do is trim my lookup value to get rid of the spaces that I've got here. I still get a few partly because the spaces are over here, but also sometimes you get spaces that are not spaces you've entered via a keyboard. They might have been imported from other systems, non-printed characters. So you can also use clean to clean any other spaces. Okay, didn't do anything there, but uh, clean will cover all bases. Now, to deal with the spaces that we've got over here, we could also clean and trim our lookup table. If I do that, I get the value error because clean and trim only work on single values, not multiple array of values. But if I use Control Shift Enter, it does do the trick. Now you'll notice, let's do control shift enter again, that the values are aligned to the left, which means they're text values. And that's because clean and trim has also clean and trimmed these prices. Not that there are any spaces in there, but it's essentially returned the, the array of values as text values, including the values that we are returning with our VLOOKUP. So we can wrap this all in the value function, which converts a text string that represents a number to a number. And then I get a proper result. And you can see it's dealt with all the problems there. Okay, now if I was to try the same thing, I copy this formula here, try the same thing in new Excel. You just press enter and it does the right thing. I don't need to use control shift enter. So to end this video, let's just look at some advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages of using array formulas. Advantages, where you use multi-cell array formulas, ensure consistency as the formulas have to be the same so the user couldn't edit one of the formulas. Arrays will use less memory and can make your calculations quicker than a non-array solution. Array formulas make it possible to perform some calculations that would otherwise be impossible. Disadvantages of using array formulas. Although array formulas use less memory, if you use too many large arrays, it can slow down the calculations. You cannot use column references, such as the whole of column A or D in your array formulas. Some users may find them hard to understand or edit. And if they do edit the formula, they have to know, they have to press Control shift enter to get it to work again. Okay, thank you very much for listening. It's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Train.